Well, I've had this running overnight. Last night when I was taking the dogs out and it was quiet, I could actually hear the turbine from like way up there. So it's a little bit loud. Uh, I still need to add insulation. You see that, well, it has melted the snow on the roof because I have the lights running and it's, uh, I don't know, maybe 150 watts of electricity or energy going on in there. One of the things I did before setting this back up is I'd taken it down to maybe think about redoing some of the bearing stuff in there is I also widened the hole where the shaft goes through to make sure that that's not rubbing and causing friction and slowing it down. But now I've noticed that there's actually water spraying out of it. You can see it splashing here. That's because there's a lot of water coming out of that hole and probably getting flung by the turbine itself. So that's making the entire housing here wet. And that's some mold that was growing from uh, before I had the turbine running. And some of you asked if rotating the turbine would change how it operates. And it does seem to be producing more power. You can see there, 139 watts. But I dropped the bulbs and one of the bulbs broke. So I need to replace that. That might affect our readings. And here's another interesting observation for you guys. <clears throat> might help explain kind of how these work. So you see we have a higher voltage right now. I have some of the light bulbs turned off. But our watts is not as high. Now if I turn on some load, that slows down the turbine and puts more load on it and it gets more efficient. That guy's noisy. It was interesting. It was showing up to 147 watts, which is the highest like steady state I've seen. And I wonder if maybe me moving the turbine housing around is moving the jet. So I'm going to mess around with that a little bit, see if we can increase the power output by moving the jet. <clears throat> I'm going to do that by loosening. This is a bulkhead fitting in a, a large hole. So I can move the bulkhead fitting around in the hole for alignment. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I did some tweaking. It's actually surprisingly quiet now, even with the lid open, so I can talk and think without it disturbing me. I think the jet was severely misaligned. And I was trying to align it, align it just loosen it up, and move it around manually, but I just tweaked it with this and it increased velocity and voltage and watts significantly. So I am positive now that jet alignment is crucial. I mean, obviously it is, but I, I'm certain that a more accurate jet alignment mechanism than uh, a bulkhead fitting in a loose hole is required. So this is all stuff that I'm learning for Turbine 2.0. 
And so this is Turbine 1.0 using some free parts that I got. It's not necessarily optimal, but it's pretty good. So I have some water leaking out there. Uh, so it'd probably be a really good idea to, for the next like revision or modification, is to rotate it because now you guys have seen all the how it works on the sides. So I don't need the sides anymore, really. So I'll rotate it so the axis of the motor is vertical. And I'll remove that bottom plate and then put the back on it and then remove one side so then it's like open to the bottom. Now we can see how many watts it's producing. Now keep in mind, sorry this is a little bit uh, fuzzy from condensation, but we're at like 118 PSI approximately. And approximately 11 gallons per minute. I wasn't clear in the last video, that nozzle that I put on there I ran it through a calculator and it should be outputting 11 gallons per minute, but I have not verified. I kind of don't want to touch it and put it on the bucket because I have really good jet alignment right now and I don't want to mess that up. <laughs> so I can't necessarily verify that it's 11 gallons per minute, but it should be approximately that. And just wipe this off a little bit. Let's see how many watts we're getting here. See that? 185 watts at 83 volts this is DC let me uh, clarify something for you guys so that alternator is generating three phase AC and that three phase AC is coming into this rectifier which converts it to DC positive and negative just like in a car but at much higher voltages 83 volts DC and this is a shunt amp meter so it's been finely calibrated with a bandsaw, if you can imagine that. And if you measure the voltage difference between the two sides, you can do some math and get your current out of that. Now this is, uh, I did compare the current with this and another amp meter that I have, and it's within about 10%. I'm only running at a, a low portion of, what is this, 2.2 amps? But this is a 100 amp shunt, so it's not necessarily most accurate or precise, for that matter, either, at lower currents. But it is pretty good. It's within, you know, 10%. The voltage, I also compared the voltage, and that is within, like, 1% with another meter that I have. So I'm assuming that these numbers are pretty good and mostly in line with being accurate and precise. Now, what I can do, I have a whole bunch of lights rigged up here. And I found that the sweet spot, and these lights are just acting as resistors uh, that produce light. Because <laughs> that's what incandescent bulbs are, is basically resistors that produce light. And if I, say I turn this lamp on, you can watch our watts there will decrease because it's drawing too much current, the turbine's going too slow to be efficient. And I can turn it off and it stabilizes back at 185 approximately. And then I can turn other bulbs off and we'll run faster, higher voltage, but less current. See 184, so 185, okay. 186, so maybe that is a, a more efficient voltage RPM, but it's kind of right in the middle. Uh, I don't know what sort of ohms resistance that would be. It snowed last night, and the lid didn't have any snow on top of it, so there was a lot of heat generating or coming up out of it. And then sometimes it... I don't know what happens. Like, there, it just did a little bit of a change. You might have heard it. I don't know if maybe there's a short somewhere. Um, but our voltage and our watts just changed a little bit. So now it's running at a little bit less than it was. So I, I don't know exactly what's going on. I have also noticed that there's a little bit of vibration in that, like it's out of balance. I didn't do anything to balance it actively. I just kind of bolted it together and threw it on, assuming it would be pretty good. And it, it is pretty good. There's a little bit of a vibration, though. Actually, it's mostly gone now. Most of the vibration when it was a, when I had the axis horizontal and I was playing around with it. 
Yeah, see, it's the same light configuration that it was doing 186 watts, and now it's 179. So something's a little bit goofy here. I'm not sure exactly what. It could be anything. Who knows? All right, well, guys, um, I do appreciate your input. And it's given me a lot of ideas and things to think about that are actually valuable, good ideas. So please don't stop now. Clearly, we're getting somewhere. Uh, again, this is only revision 1.0. Uh, 2.0 will be a stainless steel housing turgo design with multiple nozzles, a lot like what Chris Harbor built. Sorry if the phone's shaking a little bit. My arm's all the way out there and it's a little bit cold. My fingers are cold. Uh, so, yeah, we're making good progress. Uh, again, I'm going to be out of town for a few days, so don't expect any videos for a lot of December, really. I'll see if I can edit some stuff together and uh, put it on a time delay release, just so I have some content. And this is a very fun experience for me. Uh, don't forget, I would be doing this on my own anyways without you guys, but you're just helping make it so much better.